we just pushed this guy over. I'm Ptolemy. Ptolemy. <laughs> I'm Ptolemy. <laughs> Tyrant boy king. What are you going to do for <laughs> Suffer my wrath. Welcome to Discovery Tour by Assassin's Creed Ancient Egypt. Hey everyone, it's Luke here with Andy. Hi. We're going on a voyage not of violence. No. But of... The peaceful way. The peaceful way. Of history. I mean, there may also be some violence. History is very history violent. History is violent. Do you have a look at history? It's, it's violent. It's disgusting. <laughs> Do you know how many people have died in history? I, I try not to all think about them. it. <laughs> Everyone who ever lived in history died. They've all died. So... They've all died, and many of them died in Egypt. Yep. Yeah, we're going to go meet them. Many of them died in a crocodile. <laughs> in or around a crocodile. <laughs> Wait, this isn't Bayek. Yeah. You can be 25 characters in history tour mode. Didn't Sweet. know that, did you? Wee. But I don't have to go to the tour. And I can go you, off. You've already wandered off from the tour. I wandered off from the tour. <laughs> I'll have you know, I wandered off from the tour. All right, fine. Okay. Well, can I kill this heron? Or Try it. it is. No, you can't because there's you no can't. combat in history tour mode. Oh, but it's mode. good that they don't even like fly away, though. I can look, look at it. You can peacefully <gasps> examine the herons. I can pierce my brain with its beak. Oh, I've just remembered that animals are more interesting than history. <laughs> <laughs> you need to wait until they release the animal the tour. The animal Nick. tour. Oh, I would really like that. <laughs> Okay. Alexandria, planning of the city. Oh man, that sounds dull. <laughs> <laughs> All right, passport. Ooh, the riddle of the Sphinx. That sounds good. Mummies. No offense, Alexandria. But you're not mummies. Yeah, try being mummies. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. I can change, can change character, character as well. Not okay, cannons. so we are Ptolemy, the cruel boy king. And we're going to learn all about mummies. We're going to learn about mummies. Yeah. You'll be a mummy one day, Ptolemy. Sure will. <laughs> He's like stamping in here. He's like, right, teach me about <laughs> these <laughs> mummies. The different types of mummification took into account the social level and richness of the deceased and even included animals. Ooh, they mummified animals. The like. What? Isn't that interesting? Sounds mean. As well as Not while they were alive. <laughs> Actually, maybe. Maybe. We're about yeah. to find out. Uh, let's follow the glowing... So you follow the glowing line of, of knowledge. Yeah, and it takes you to learn the f all the facts. Mm. Look at this. <gasps> look at these. Look, all right, look at this guy. That guy looks unwell. He is. But that guy's lucky because he's going to be a cool mummy. Yeah, <laughs> he's <laughs> going to be in Beetlejuice's graveyard review. <laughs> Don't look. Look how surly that guy's looking at the king. Well, he doesn't want to look at it because he's like, ew, 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 ew. He's not happy about it. I mean, I can't imagine that's a good job. No. The purification of the body began with a libation Ooh. from sacred water. The <laughs> the body <laughs> that guy's like, cheese it. <laughs> Ptolemy's here. Once the body was properly purified, embalmers removed the organs, following very specific procedures. Oh, gross. So these kind of pictures. The brain was oh, no. by inserting oh. a spoon through the nostril to break the ethmoid bone. Ugh. Then using a spatula, a spatula, the pieces of the brain were removed as thoroughly as Probably possible. not as large as our modern spatulas, though, right? No. ...extracted after a process of liquefaction, oh. achieved through the use of a caustic liquid. History's bad. The cranial box, once emptied... The cranial box. <laughs> fill your head with wine. If you thought you weren't going to hear the phrase cranial box today. <laughs> Ptolemy is like, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> can Ptolemy climb walls and stuff? Yeah, I go expect up. he can. Go up a wall. Hang on. Yes, Ptolemy. Ptolemy. The parkouring Ptolemy. boy king. <laughs> Just try and stop Ptolemy. He can't. <laughs> Sir Ptolemy's gone wild again. He's like, you'll never stop me. Whee! Oh, of course, we can't be killed in education mode. Ptolemy doesn't receive full damage <laughs> because of blessings from the gods. <laughs> oh, sweet time for the evisceration. Oh my, oh no, my no. god. They've eviscerated him. The inside of the body was also rinsed with palm wine. Seems like a lot of waste of palm wine. Palmers filled the belly with pure myrrh, cinnamon. Ooh, cinnamon. And pumpkin spice. That's going to be one delicious mummy. It smells pretty good now. Sounds better than being buried with all your organs. Yeah, I mean, I'm not using them. No. Oh, is that a cat? Tomb. Oh no! And I'm going to be very upset if a cat gets mummified. <laughs> I'm going to mummify a cat <laughs> right now. I don't really see the need to preserve the body if you're going to wrap it in bandages anyway. It's not like you're looking at it. I suppose so. You know how with mummies, like they're always, you can always see a bit of them. You need that bit to look good. Yeah, I suppose it's like um, you need to have your body intact in the afterlife, so you don't want to rot away. Because if you yeah. rot away in the afterlife, oh yeah, that would be bad. The last place you want to rot is in the afterlife because you're going to be there for a long time, and it's yeah. important to make friends on day one. You should sew on some extra arms or something. Make you like better the in the afterlife. <gasps> sew on another head. Sew on a baboon head. <laughs> Like Wolverine claws and <laughs> yeah, and a baboon head, <laughs> a baboon head on each fist. <laughs> and finally, Kebasenoweth, 
Do you want to have a go at pronouncing that? Kebesenuf. 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 Yeah. Like Peter Serafinowicz. Yeah. Peter Peter Kebesenuf. Well, I mean, this whole process has been extremely unpleasant. What else is going to happen now? Natron salt. Oh, salt. That's fine. Salt's nice. Just properly season the corpse. Well, once you've got the cinnamon in it, it's only half delicious. Got a massive amount of salt there. Get a nice salt crust on the fair. I love salt. Do you like salt? Yeah. Oh, look, they're getting a real, a real crust on it. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh no, his toe. His His toe's uncovered. His toe. His toe isn't going to be salty in the afterlife. (laughs) You have no toes. Oh, really? They're packing it in there. Oh, oh. Well, that's an animation I didn't need to see. Right. Yeah. There it is, right up to the elbow. Oh boy. Oh. Go and get a bit more salt in you. Ah. You get a nice picture of it. Ah. I didn't realise you could bring up other pictures. I want to see the organs. (laughs) <laughs> okay, we have to go back because Andy wants to see the organ Wait, pictions. Was what's this the one? A canopic jars. Oh, Ooh. Those, those are just canopic jars. Those are just jars. Once Never mind. Oh no, look at that hook. <gasps> oh, is that the spatula? Yeah. Go right in your brain. <laughs> then using a spatula. No, 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 no. Oh look, it gives you a little tick when you've learned the history. When you've learned all the history. Once the body was fully desiccated by the natron treatment, embalmers oiled, painted, and sometimes even added hair extensions or a wig. Oh, look. It's a wig. Ah, so you can get your hair, hair done all fancy. Preparation to give the body a more colourful and lively appearance while preparing it to resist mould. So it serves a dual purpose of looking super fancy and, looking sharp. and resisting the mould. Yeah. Next came the phase which gave mummies their most well-known... Yes, ah, here, right. we here we go. Here we go. It's a full, full ah. mummy. Look at that one. Oh, mummies. Imagine that coming after you. Men had their arms crossed on their chests while women had the right arm folded over their breasts and the left arm stretched along the body. Mm. Ah. However, techniques evolved over time. In addition to the jewelry and amulets arranged on the skin of the deceased, amulets were also carefully inserted into the weaving of the linen strips. Each amulet was linked to a myth or to an ideological belief related to rebirth. They're like little turtles. Yeah, they're nice. I'd like to get buried with a few of them. Which one do you want? Uh, I think my favourite is that one that looks like a grumpy stood up dog. <laughs> looks I don't know like, what it is. Um, is it a hippo? Uh, it looks like that Muppet lady, Janice. Oh, yeah, Muppets. Janice the Muppet. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to be buried with Janice <laughs> the Muppet. <laughs> well, wouldn't we all? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, Look yeah. At that one. Look at that. That That's, is a. F- yeah. I wonder how much that would cost in a like million, today's money. A million Pharaoh dollars. Oh god, he's uh, he's got out of his wraps. No, <laughs> he's loose. <laughs> Every once in a while, the mummy will get loose. Oh, a ceremony of opening of the mouth. A vital step of the funerary process. This ceremony was meant to bring back to life the deceased themselves, or an object representing the deceased. Okay, but is it what it sounds like? Because that sounds scary. Yeah. You open it and all those scarab beetles come out. Ah. Uh, there were no less than seventy-five different stages for the opening of the mouth. Whoa. What? I open Ooh. my mouth all the time without that many stages. Oh, no, I use a few tools. <laughs> How many spices and perfumes do you use? <laughs> it's kind of, I have like a sort of modified shoehorn when I need to open my mouth. Sure. Oh, there we go. There we go, that mouth is getting opened. Well. Hey, we did we a tour. We learned all about mummies. What was your favourite mummy fact that you learned? Um, the spatula bit. Spatula bit. That was good. Mm. All right, let's see what else we got tour-wise. I want to hear about fashion. I want to know what people were wearing. Fashion. Wait. Ooh, okay. Yeah. The riddles of the Sphinx. Okay, all right, let's do it. We're going to learn about the Sphinx. Let's do it. Oh, no. Press the wrong button. Shall I go and climb all over the Sphinx first? Yeah. See what you can learn by climbing it. Yeah. Let's climb it. And then there'll be a test about the Sphinx, and then yeah. we'll do the discovery tour, and there'll be another test, and we'll see when we know the most. Yes. Go on, Ptolemy. Get out there. Come the t- on. The timid boy king. <laughs> yes. Not so timid now, is he? Don't get this in your history class, do you? No. You don't get to Crawling climb all over right the... on the sphinx's the nose. Ancient, the ancient things. I'm gonna put my head in it. And now a simple leap of faith. Whoosh. Yeah. Okay, so this is a sphinx. There it is. There it is. It's very grand. Him. He looks like a reaction image. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Finish the sentence. Me right when. Ptolemy says we're all getting entombed in his, in his pyramid. Me right when I get mummified with Ptolemy. <laughs> Me when they pull my brain out my nose with a hook. Where's it's the, the tour? tour? Oh wait, there it is. The gold, I see it. Uh-huh. Shimmering gold. We just push this guy over, I'm Ptolemy. Ptolemy. <laughs> I'm Ptolemy. <laughs> Tyrant boy king. <laughs> what are you going to do for <laughs> Suffer my wrath. Suffer the wrath. Okay. You have offended Ptolemy. There it is. Nice. Welcome to 
The riddles of the Sphinx. Okay, what a is a Sphinx? Is That's easy. It's a big cat. The <laughs> but then a cat got in there <laughs> while they were <laughs> sculpting it. <laughs> the sculptor thought the cat was king. <laughs> He'd already started. <laughs> he didn't want to restart, so he just put the king's head on a cat body. Perfect. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question at the end of this, Andy. Okay. And you ask me one. Okay. So I'll have to pay attention. Who built the Sphinx? For what purpose? And who does it represent? Wow, These look at his massive arms. His massive butt. They're so long. They are long. Exist, however. Some more no wonder he was king. Others. One theory supposes that Jedifrey chose to pay homage to his father Khufu <gasps> by building the Great Sphinx of Giza. The stone temple on the eastern face of the Sphinx would have been added later on by his brother and successor, Khafre, in order to strengthen mm. the divine worship of their father. Stompy, 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 Ptolemy. Another theory suggests that the Sphinx was built by Khafre and was meant to represent him. That's a bit vain, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, you're not going to make friends that way. Like if you came in one day and were like, like, oh, what did you do this weekend? Yes. Yeah, I built a giant statue of myself as a lion man. <laughs> I think that was odd. <laughs> Well, I've got news Some about this weekend. I <laughs> like the idea that the Sphinx has snuck up on this guy. <laughs> and he's like, These everything seems normal. If I, if I turn around now, am I going to see a Sphinx? <laughs> well, he can see his feet. Uh, that's true. He can see his, the, the telltale he's like, Sphinx oh legs. Oh my gosh. This is the one thing I didn't want to happen. <laughs> While ancient Egypt as a whole leaves a rather monochrome vision of its monuments and statuary, it is vital to understand that in ancient times, absolutely everything was painted. See, that's interesting. The I think that's, I I really like that. And that's yeah. not just Egypt, is it? That's, you know, ancient Greece and ancent Rome. Yeah. Because you see their statues in museums now, and you just imagine that it was all clean, white marble aesthetic. Yeah. There's that statue of um, Shakespeare in a church in Stratford, mm. which um, was originally painted, and then they whitewashed it, and there were no actual features on the head. It was just like a balloon. <laughs> they were like, oh no. <laughs> Now we don't know what he looked like. Oh man, that's a shame. Do you ever well, think that sometimes the ones without any paint on now, so like all the paint's gone away, do you ever think that they look a bit better the than the reconstructions? The like when you see them with this, what it would look like with paint, you think actually, I think it's a bit nicer. Do you think the Sphinx looks better without? I think the Sphinx might look better without paint. It looks the eyes. I think that the, the, like, the pure like stone or marble blank eyes yeah. I think look quite majestic and imposing. But as soon as you paint eyes on it, it looks like a reaction face. <laughs> yes, it's true, but I think he looks better with a nose. Yeah, yeah, the nose is good. The, the nose, nose helps. Good, yeah, I'll allow the nose. Red had a strong symbolism in ancient Egypt. It was both the color of life and the color of death. It's confusing. It could represent the sands of the <laughs> desert or the brilliance of the sun. Red was also associated with the god Seth. Vengeful and destructive. The Egyptian word for red, Deshur, is also a word pronouncing that? which was used to signify the desert. DSLR. Or the royal crown of lower Deshur. Deshur. Yeah. Deshur. In art. Uh, for, for the record, Andy has the, the headphones in this game, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going off While the subtitles. For women. Today, the Sphinx is called the terrifying one. <laughs> this appellation right. is translated. It is from quite terrifying. Arabic yeah, yeah. especially without the nose. Which in turn was so you think that looks better with the smashed in face? Uh, no, no, no. I'd, I'd keep the nose, but I, I think I like the monochrome. I think that goes for all statues as well. Interesting. Now go on, go. get up it. Yes, go See, on. See, this is why it's all wrecked today, because, because Ptolemy the boy king's clambering all over it, yeah, look at chipping him. away at it with his little sandals. His, his needle-sharp toes. <laughs> The Sphinx as a whole was carved in situ from a natural stone. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. So it was carved out of rock it's rather than... Yeah. Ah. And imagine finding that. Yeah. yeah. Be, I'd probably be quite scared. I'd keep digging. I'd wonder, like, does it definitely end where we think it ends? Yeah. Is, does it go down further? Is the Sphinx on the back of an even larger <laughs> animal? <laughs> Is the Sphinx just the top of the hat? Oh, good. An even bigger colossus. Look at the back of it. You never see the back of its head, do you? No. Well, now we do. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's got like a, a, it's got snake, a snake. A snake on its head. Um, I never knew the Sphinx had a snake on its head. Well, you've never had the opportunity to get up this close with an accurate 3D model of it. Yeah, and do sick parkour. 
Yeah. yeah. Ah. And roll. These days, if you go to the Sphinx, mad parkour is frowned upon. Yeah. I bet if you were Ptolemy the Boy King, he'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can do what he wants. Whoa. Hello. <gasps> what? Let's go find it. Oh, if there my is word. Has it got openings? Since then, numerous attempts to pierce the Sphinx's secrets have been carried out. I had no idea that that was the case. I had no idea that people thought there was something in there that could be got out. But, I mean, you've got to ask yourself, like, why is this here? Yeah, I suppose so. If not as a cool If not to tomb. give me a bunch of treasure. Whee! That's from Ptolemy. Head-butted a rock. <laughs> keep, he's got that helmet on. Keep those canopic jars handy. <gasps> There's an entrance. Ah! Another entrance in the back of the Sphinx aroused Ooh, curiosity. Here we go. This entrance at the back of the Sphinx leads to different cavities of a few meters each, in directions going inside the statue's body and under the surface. The team has used this opportunity to extrapolate a little more. I'm going in. <gasps> We're going in. Oh my gosh. Are we actually? Yeah. <gasps> We're actually going in! Going inside the Sphinx. Ah! <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing this. We're going to get ancient. We're going to get We're going to get trouble. old mosquito diseases. Oh my god. Uh, Look at the unks. Drawings. Uh, all right, Andy, I'm going don't further go any further. In. I'm going no! In. I'm jumping oh, in. Oh, great, Andy. You've killed King Ptolemy in a Sphinx. I, Where are we? I, we're inside the Sphinx. It's dark. What have you done? <laughs> Man, we should have brought a torch. I mean, ideally, we would have, yeah. I think it's just an empty space. I bet it's not. I bet if we could illuminate this, it's full of horrors. <laughs> Terrible horrors. I'm like an inch from a horror. Yeah. Oh, horrors right now scuttling around our backs. <laughs> and that was the last anyone saw of Ptolemy. <laughs> King Ptolemy. I can't, are I don't you actually, able to get out of No, I don't think I am. <laughs> I can't see the way back. Andy wandered off the tour and got stuck in a sphinx. <laughs> Luke. Yes. Luke. Yes, sir. <gasps> Found a torch. Whoa, praise be to Ptolemy. We're going to investigate the interior of the sphinx. Don't do it. What do you leave think it, is in here? Curses. Leave it be. Curses, maybe. <laughs> I love Ptolemy's little crouch walk. And I'm gonna. Can I light torches? Can you light that? He's having such a good boy king adventure. Oh no! Uh, don't ah, drop the torch! Oh, oh, oh. You've doomed us all! <laughs> Ptolemy. Oh my god. Uh, there are secret, spiders in here. Secret chambers. Spiders that haven't been disturbed. They've never seen the light. Uh, They've never seen uh, boy king flesh. <laughs> They're gonna love it. Oh, oh my god. my word. Oh, it's full of canopic jars. No one was ever meant to come in here, Luke. Oh, why are we in here? No one was ever meant to see the secrets contained. We shouldn't have done this, Andy. <laughs> shouldn't we, Luke? No. Or no. should we actually have done it? No, this was a terrible mistake. Oops. No, 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 no <laughs> stop dropping the door. I'll never stop. <laughs> I can't be stopped. All right, well, is there anything... <gasps> Oh my gosh! Secret okay, passage. Is, is there anything in the is there anything in the sarcophagus in here? Is there a scary mummy? Is there a skeleton? There is a mummy in there. Ah. I don't want to alarm you. Have a look at it. Should we burn it? Climb on it. Drop the torch on it. I'm standing on it. <laughs> standing <laughs> on its face. This would be disrespectful if you weren't the boy king Ptolemy. <laughs> Teabagging this mummy would be, would <laughs> no, be disrespectful <laughs> if I weren't Ptolemy the boy king. <laughs> All right, Luke. I'm heading further into the Sphinx. Okay. Um, Whoa, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the action <laughs> sliding into the Sphinx. You nearly action slid into that pit. Oh, boy. That spider pit. It looks like some kind of trap. Tell me you ain't play that. Too smart to fall for your trap. <laughs> oh, my God. What oh, is look this? At that. There better be a collectible in there. <laughs> oh, my God. It's only a, a bloody box. It's a box. It's a decorative box. Yeah. Can you set fire to it? No. Luke, I'm going in the pit. Do it. Ptolemy away! <gasps> oh my goodness! How deep it does goes the Sphinx all the way go? down? Presumably, at some point, this is in the game. Yeah, yeah, it must be. Presumably, and it's full of stuff. Andy, oh. I've got the heebie-jeebies. <gasps> ah, look, there were there were goat people here. <laughs> a race I of think goat there was people. a super intelligent race of goat people. I think the precursors. The... Oh my god! Oh, can you a go? Passage. Can you go in there? Oh. oh. What was that? Was that on your what? left? <gasps> Claws. Oh my god, it's a mini it's sphinx. It's a mini sphinx. That one's really well preserved. Look at its gold. Don't you think that looks good with no paint on it? Yeah, yeah. When it's all not degraded and stuff, that does look good. Mm. This sphinx is bigger on the inside. It's got a kind of TARDIS thing going on. Yeah, well, it goes down. It goes all the way down. Oh my word, imagine. Oh my god, steps. Steps. What's that? What's that? Is that like a blue ceiling? Oh my god. Uh, 
This surely is non-canon. This is some sort of first civilization. What's that? Stuff. What if this is a tiny civilization of ants and you're treading on it? <laughs> look at their pyramids. You've become a Godzilla. <laughs> look at the sphinxes there. <laughs> hey, look, there's a tiny Ptolemy in there. Yeah. What I did was I went through the sphinx and came out the other side massive, and that's the real world. <laughs> and now I'm teabagging the sphinx that I'm inside. <laughs> well, I think we've all learned a lot. Where's. Oh my god. Oh, chest. Well, we got to King Ptolemy lost in a sphinx. I think we is can it? fast travel away. I have to climb out. Ptolemy doesn't do things by halves. Okay, fine. I want to emerge blinking into the sunlight. It's Ptolemy's big escape. Yeah, imagine the whole thing's caving in. Yeah. Oh. Run faster, Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Run. <laughs> Get out of there, Ptolemy. Grab the jade monkey. <laughs> <laughs> You've angered Seth. <laughs> God, you get turned around, don't you? Yeah. Yes, these, Andy, you do get turned around in these in ancient, ancient Egyptian hidden tombs. tombs. I'm willing to bet some sort of curse. It's, mm. it's changing the layout of the tomb in real time. Ah, oh, Ptolemy. It must why? be there, straight, for, straight forward. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, I'll fast travel. <laughs> Ptolemy got lost and died. Okay, we fast traveled out. Yep. Ptolemy's That's safe. That's canon. That's canon. <laughs> That's a power that Ptolemy had. King Ptolemy. The arrogant boy king. All right, let's right, get more next, Sphinx learning. Next fact. While there have been no major discoveries pertaining to the Sphinx of Giza in recent years, theories and hypotheses continue to emerge. Without validation provided by archaeological sources, however, they remain unsubstantiated. So no one's really sure what the Sphinx is all about. Yeah. But it might contain a tomb. After a few attempts at giving the Sphinx artistic proportions, the team instead decided to use photogrammetry mapping to faithfully reproduce the proportions of the Sphinx. Makes sense. Egyptologist Mark Lehner believed that Amenhotep II... Yeah, who is this? Oh, he wanted to get in on it. Oh, yeah. He was like, and also, Amenhotep. Oh, that is, that is so uncool. I'd be like me painting myself small in the corner of the Mona Lisa or something. That would be good. <laughs> and also, Luke was there. The Mona Lisa and Luke. Yeah. I mean, Luke and the Mona Lisa, I would say. Yeah, that's really uncool, Amenhotep. Yeah. Like, you've, made, you've made a fool of yourself. Power went to its head, and that's coming from King Ptolemy, the mad boy king. Make yourself like a bigger sphinx of you next to the Sphinx. Yeah. Don't do like a rubbish little statue of you standing there. What well, is he like running out of desert or something? <laughs> <laughs> I have to start stacking them on top of each other. While sleeping between the Sphinx's paws, the future Thutmose IV saw in a dream the god Horomaket proclaiming his coming accession on the throne of the two lands. The 15-ton dream stela built by Thutmose IV to commemorate his dream <laughs> was discovered a good by dream. an Italian Egyptologist <laughs> Giovanni that is clearly the stone that is keeping in a curse. Oh yeah. Undertook the task of yeah, don't mess with that. Don't pull that stone up. Which had yet again covered it. That yeah, what's with the beard? Havilia discovered fragments of the Sphinx's beard that had probably been added during yeah, no beard. the Ah oh, yeah. A fragment is displayed at the British, oh, Museum. the British Museum. It is believed this fragment of beard was possibly kept in place thanks to the statue of Amenhotep II. Oh, okay, so Amenhotep is helping he, out a bit. He helped keep the beard in place. He helped place. keep the beard Good job, Amenhotep. Amenhotep. You're, you're a beard stan. Around 1378, a Sufi by the name of Mohammed Saim <laughs> al-Dar could not stand this wow. vision of the monument, and in an iconoclastic <laughs> act, broke the nose of the Sphinx. According to the texts, he was then hanged and burned between the legs of the Sphinx for his crime. Yikes. Wow. So that's that's like a theory, right? But it's a pretty yeah. plausible one. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows for real. Hey, we learned about the Sphinx. Well, Ptolemy. Yeah. I hope you're feeling happy and full of knowledge now. All right, Luke, time for your test. <gasps> okay. Okay, what ruler was the Sphinx built to commemorate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Um... Uh, not the one who's between its legs. No. Uh, no, I can't remember. Who well, was it? Well, there are two schools of thought. Some okay. believe it was Khufu. Yeah. Who the Great Pyramid of Giza is also dedicated to. Some thought it was his son, Khafre. Ah, okay. Um, so I would have accepted either answer. You would have accepted either answer, but I gave... But you gave no answer. I gave neither. Yeah. Okay, Andy, but can you tell me what... We, we know it for a fact that red is an important colour in the Egyptian culture. Sure. But can you tell me which god is associated with the colour red. Well, of course, it's Seth. 
It is indeed. Well done. Thank you. You've, you were 100% on my test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy, where are we now? We're at beer and bread. Ah. I mean, bread and beer. <laughs> While the Mesopotamians invented beer, including invented using beer. a straw to avoid the sediments and herbs, ancient like mate. Egyptians perfected Ooh, using a straw. the straw. Like what, sorry? Like mate, the um, South American hot drink. Oh, I've not had that. It has like a layer of um, stuff on the top, and so you use like a silver the straw to era, drink the hot beer drink the most below the top layer. Oh, oh nice. Alcoholic beverage, food offerings it's Gollum there, the just offering. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Master drinks the red and the red. <laughs> Master uses a straw to avoid the sentiment. Beer was the popular drink of ceremony. How much beer per day? The festival of drunkenness. The festival of drunkenness. I reckon it wasn't originally the festival of drunkenness. I reckon they were just like, this festival's getting out of hand. We're going to have to lean into it. Egyptian adults and children consumed beer with all of their meals. Wow. And medical texts include hundreds of remedies that contain beer. So, you know how no one's really sure why the Sphinx was built? Is it possible that just everyone was smashed? They were drunk, a bit. And no one remembers they why, they, why they did it. They thought it would be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> and it is. We've all been there, you know. You Let's make uh, the pharaoh, but he's a cat. Yeah, you go out on the town. Once ready, the bread and ah, grain look, mixture there's a sieve. Ah, uh, makes sense. Water. They invented the sieve. Mm -hmm. While there are many ancient accounts for making bread, most of the knowledge known about ancient Egyptian brewing comes from an account by the alchemist Zosimus. Over 300 years I kind of do, actually. I think it looks... Rain. Pretty good. More looks like a nice ciabatta. <laughs> looks, a bit fib it looks a bit fibrous. I mean, it looks a little bit fossilised, yeah. but, um, but still, you know, bread's However, bread. I love bread. Food was prepared on the floor until the Middle Kingdom, <laughs> when cooking benches were introduced. <laughs> <laughs> Took them that long to think of quality, not having food on the floor. <laughs> I guess it makes me think that maybe food on the floor is fine. However, you think it would be like an intuitive thing. Yeah, but someone's got to think of it first. I think that about like cleaning a wound or something. Like when you, you know, if you if you have a little cut, yeah, kind of you want to clean it. But that is a modern thing, isn't it? That's you know because people didn't know about or like um, storing food or refrigerating or food. food. Like it just seems obvious, mm. but it, it, but it, but it isn't. Added, it wasn't fruits, always. Nuts, honey, and Despite their best efforts, sand regularly made its way into their food. Oh. Additionally, particles from the grain grinding stone tools and ovens they used also contributed to attrition Ooh. and prematurely all the teeth worn teeth. Up, yeah. all the, sand eating. the team tried to portray this through toothache animations and commoners sweeping sand off. Toothache animations. Oh man, sucks to be the mocap guy who had to get toothache. <laughs> For verisimilitude, you actually <laughs> have to have toothache. So that was a little taste of the Assassin's Creed Origins Discovery Tour. Ptolemy Andy, is pleased. Ptolemy is pleased. What was the favourite thing you learned, Andy? Um, oh, uh, my favourite thing yep. that I learned was that the Sphinx had a big red face that looked like <laughs> a reaction image. <laughs> I enjoyed learning that that guy had a statue, his own statue added to the <laughs> Sphinx later <laughs> in an enormous act of historical arrogance. Amenhotep <laughs> II was here also. <laughs> And also the um, lead parkour skills of of, of Ptolemy, of yeah, the tyrant. which we can only assume a cannon. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he enjoyed running around, doing his flips. empire. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's me. It's me, King, not you're King you're Ptolemy. <laughs> Put everyone to death. Yeah, you're all coming to be entombed alive in my pyramid. <laughs> Ptolemy <Come> out. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.